Buddhism, right? Buddhism had a, well, the way it's structured, there was the Four Noble Truths, and then there's the Eightfold Path. So after you entertain the Four Noble Truths, then they would say maybe then the next thing, the Four breaks down into an Eight, which is all right. So the first one is right view. And some people think it's uh, circular, but I believe it's linear. So there's eight. So there's right view, and then there's, I, I forget the rest, but I think it's right understanding, right meditation, right livelihood, right, yeah, yeah. But if it is linear, then all the other rights are based on the right view. Because if you have the wrong view, then it'll be wrong meditation, wrong lifestyle, wrong this and wrong that. So the right view sets it all off. And so I would, I would feel that the, the right view is rooted in his revelatory uh, statement, which is there is no self. What Buddha put, it was called a natar in the old language, which means no self, non-self. There's no self. So he didn't believe there was a soul that was migrating through lives to get better and improve itself to a point where it completed its mission and it was right where it basically started from, you know, wholeness, yeah, you know. So that was the prevalent idea in India. So he said, I don't think that's the case. You know? And he investigated in his own laboratory, looked at his own life and looked inside, whatever you want to call it. And he couldn't find anybody. He couldn't find any long-lasting, independent, separate entity or any divine thing or anything like that. So he came up with this idea. And then the right view would be that view. Yeah. So because if, if that view isn't taken, the view that we're in is a dualistic view. We're taking this to be the subject, or you to be the subject. Now, subjectivity is happening through this, but it isn't you doing it. That's the sort of dilemma. Yeah? There is subjectivity, so everyone here is having an experience, I'm seeing you. And that's what you're having, your experience, and I'm seeing you. And there's all these different yous, but there's only one I that's seeing all the yous. I, 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 I. Everyone in the world that's seeing something right now would say, I'm seeing that. The I would be the one proclamation that would be, and also the seeing, but the you, but what I was seeing would always be different, yeah? So the I and the seeing are the same. I am seeing. So I would say I is the seeing. I is the hearing. I is the feeling. I is the tasting. I is the touching. I is consciousness that's in contact. Sounds, sounds simple. So everyone's really describing the event every time they say that. I'm seeing. So where's the dilemma? Well, the dilemma in a way is that, so I'm seeing you, and it's clearly I'm seeing you as a body. Yeah? That's how I find you in a way. You're located there. So I am seeing you. And let's say we brought 800 people in here, into the room. And I'd be having the same experience. I'm seeing you, you. It would just have different degrees of amount but it would be the same thing. I'm seeing you, I'm seeing you, I'm seeing you. And every person that came in here would be having the same experience, but in, from their point of view, or from that point of view, this, this would be a you. Yeah? All right, so okay. So there's 800 people, and if I ask them, who am I, they'd say, you're you. Yeah. This makes sense, doesn't it? Because this is what's seen. You can't, anything else you can't see, this is it. But see, in this case, when the mental process asks, well, who's seeing it, it says me. Yeah, doesn't it? And in a way, so what is the me? The me is when the subjectivity or awareness gets sort of mixed in with what it's moving through, and the mental process combines them two and says, the I is a you that's called me. Yeah? And there's only one me in this whole world. There's tons of yous, and everybody, if I brought all the yous, and they, they ask, if they voted on who I am, they'd say, I'm a you, right, wouldn't they? On their direct experience, I'm a damn you. But in my distorted little interpretation of making a hybrid out of the I and you, I call it me. This is the dilemma, yeah? This is, let's say, the weak view, the deluded view, because as soon as this object is given the mantle of being the subject, Everything else is thrown into being an object to it. Yeah? So, yet every me that you, that's being held as a me, the only way I see them is a you. I never see them as me, ever, 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 ever. They're always a you. You, 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 you. Very 
clear too. Very clear. I don't get fooled by eight million yous. I don't get fooled by one you. They're all yous. But, <laughs> but so in this case, that I ness has been claimed to be me, and the me represents an identified you, actually. So now this is what's doing consciousness. It's not just consciousness is a state, a primary state. It's now an activity that I can do or not do. So now in my experience here, which is an interpretation or a story, but my story about being here is I can be really conscious or I can be unconscious. Yeah? Now, in a fact, you can't partition consciousness into making it more or less in degrees and this and a lot there and a little here and all like that. It's just mine, uh, like trying to cut a whole cloth. It can't actually cut the whole cloth, but it seems like it can cut the whole cloth. Yeah? So now consciousness which is available at all times, right where you are, all times. As long as you're conscious, seemingly, consciousness is available. I mean. That's always available. Now consciousness becomes something that you're going to promote or demote. So, in a sense, consciousness, which I would say is like a primary condition, now becomes a secondary condition based on you as the primary condition. Paul. So now this is like in recovery they say playing God, you know. So now, the mental process that produces selfing is playing God by playing God. It's actually taking itself to be God. Now, it may say I have all these gods I, I de desire and devote myself to, but it's God. It's playing the God. Yeah? See, that's the closest way you can get to God is playing the God. Because God is more a verb, if you want to use the word God, than a noun. I mean, you can take tons of gods and make them nouns, but you'll be playing God with them. Because the closest thing to God would be a verb, not a noun. <laughs> yeah. So when you think you have a God, it's the you that thinks it has the God, that's the playing God. Yeah. The you that thinks it has the God, that's the getting close to being God in a way, by playing it. Yeah. So now, And it can have many gods. You know? It can have a God when it's young and get a new God and this that, but it never gets rid of the one God, which is self. The idea of being a long-lasting, independent, separate entity. So I would say that is the wrong view, in a way, coming there. That wrong view can't correct itself, obviously, because it's, the wrong, it's, a, it's an activity called a view, so the way it's viewing is the wrongness in it. It's not what's viewing, or how it's viewing, or when it views. It's, the, it's, it's, it's format is off, yeah? It's sort of has taken subjectivity, or this, let's say, oneness, I don't like the word oneness, let's say, knownness, no thingness, and it's made, it's, it's separated into two, me and you, yeah? me as the subject, you as the object. Yeah. Two-ness can never go back into oneness. It's, it's too big. <laughs> it can't fit into oneness because it's two-ness. Yeah? It's like, it's too big to get into oneness no matter how much you purify and try to get better and improve yourself. You're still trying to put a two-ness and it won't fit. But the, this, the way we're entertaining is you're not the two-ness. If you're not that, and if it's true for you, if you're not that, you are that which you want to get into in a sense. You are the oneness. Not that you were once the two-ness and became the oneness, because that would still make the two-ness more important than the oneness, yeah? I mean, it's, that's the story of selfing. The story of selfing is so noble when it's trying to lose itself, yeah? Self trying to get out of self is that seemingly a noble preoccupation, but it doesn't work. Self can't get out of self, because no matter where you go and get to, the final, like, uh, the event horizon, where there's your voidness, it's going to be you contemplating the voidness, yeah? There's going to be two still. So self will, will definitely entertain its own, own absence, but it wants to be there when it happens. And it can't do that, because it can't be there in its absence. Yeah. And I say its absence is inherent. It is not. It is just an activity of mind. There is no... So when the seeing is happening, the hearing and the feeling and the tasting, touching, it's every day. Yeah. Every day you're on and there's contact happening. Yeah. Every day, all the time. said, suppose he said, when see, see, you know, simple, simple little invitation. When, hear, hear. 
when feel, feel, when taste, taste, when touch, touch. But watch the mind's interpretation of seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching. When there's a recognition of seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching, it recognizes that I'm the seer, I'm the hearer, I'm the feeler, I'm the taster, I'm the toucher. It's a huge leap from just the seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching to I, I am an established, foundational, separate thing that's doing this. Me, I. That's not so in my view. You know? It just doesn't hold water. Because even when you were born, they have research that you didn't have a sense of a self. It took a while, like a year and a half as a kid, to grow into this idea. Yeah. So obviously it doesn't come with the package. <laughs> it's, it's a customized version. It kicks in, and it grows, and then your interested attention falls for that, and now your life is assuming to be coming from here. And of course... The main thrust of it is you're the doer of everything, so you must be the doer of the seeing, the hearing, the feeling, the taste. You must be the doer of the thoughts, which is, is really the giant, giant entrance into mental hell. To take yourself as the doer of the thought system is just insane. Literally, it drives people totally bonkers all freaking day because they're bonded to the thought because it's my thought. These are about me. I'm the one who's thinking this. I shouldn't be thinking this. This is a bad thought. That means I'm a bad thinker. Therefore, I'm a bad person. It's all, it's all attempting to become something all day. Yeah, you watch it. It's insane. So, a thought is a thought until it's yours. <laughs> it's a huge... Holy cow. It just, it's, it's, like, it's like those little uh, cells that don't need to have sex with anything. They just produce. A thought... All you do, well, you do have, it, it gets wedded, it's, the intercourse is my, the my, a my with thought just begets tons of thoughts, unbelievable, and they get bigger and heavier every, <laughs> and it, they take more of your attention and interest, and they never leave home, <laughs> they, got, they just circle the idea of you the rest of your life, <laughs> I be mean my, I, I be mean mine, it's like, here you are in this open space, and yet you feel so claustrophobic. It's crazy, you know. You're totally, you know. And of course, what you're going to want is relief from that, aren't you? And you'll basically do anything to get the relief. And just look at your own life, and you'll see that it's the truth. For me, I was I was willing to do anything to get relief from that. But I was trying to get relief as that, which was the real kicker, the real slavery isn't the first form of slavery that you recognize. It's being enslaved to the idea of being a self. That's the real slavery. Because even when you're attempting to go free, that's a slavery. Yeah? It's so crazy. Even your most noble efforts to get out is a form of being in it. Because self can't get out of self. Yeah? And it's difficult to recognize that second aspect. Yeah? You see, you give a lot of meaning to paths and processes, but really, they don't have the ability to take you out of what you're not in. You can't get out of something you're not in. No matter how much, no matter how much you want to structure the appearances of ladders and escape routes and cells and everything, in fact, it's actually not so. And that's the only solution that worth, that's worth its salt, really, is to realize the problem inherently is imaginary. It's being made up by the thought system. You weren't feeling bonded when you were a young kid, when you were very young. What you? No, you didn't even know there was even a you. You didn't have any idea it could be better because you didn't, couldn't entertain anything other than what was happening. You were, in, you were the direct conscious contact going on. It's when the mind separated with this subject-object idea and started thinking, this shouldn't be this way. <laughs> well, who says that? You. But you was the God, so hey, it's taken to be part of the, uh, the faith. It could be different. So therefore, almost no moment is honored in the mental process. It's either you know trying to grab it or push it away. It's either an aversion to it or desiring it. Yeah? <laughs> There's never just an acknowledgement of the basic raw data that's going on, consciousness and contact. Very rarely are we sensing that. It's always a movement away or towards. Always with that inherent desire to become. Either to unbecome what we believe we are, like a fucking loser or something like that, or to become something else. But there's never an arrival. That's the point. The selfing, which that's what I call the mental process, there is no self, there is no noun, there is no 
divine being. There's no noun. There's no seer. There's no hearer. There's no feeler. There's just seeing, hearing, feeling. There's just seeing. There's just awareness. Yeah. That. I have to stop on that one. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you can see. As soon as you say divine being, it gets heavy. Yeah. Because it looks like the buck stops there. Oh, the cause of all causes. <laughs> and that's the real biggest addiction. Well, there's a few of them, but to want to know is really insanely. It's a strong drive in the self. And even if it's wrong, it doesn't care. It just wants to know. You know, let me know I'm screwed. You know, whatever. So here's the selfing. It's, let's say it's desires to be self. Yeah. The mental process is attempting to create. It's playing God. It can't create, though. It can only make appearances. Yeah. It can't create. It doesn't have the ability to create. But it wants to create the self. So it can never f- become fulfilled in that because it will never be the self. So it's, got, it's an unfulfillable desire. And the Buddha said, you know, this, all suffering comes from the desire. Well, I would say, you know, Let's say the primary desire is desire to become. Yeah? So the mental condition is desiring to become the self. Yeah? Or desiring to unbecome the self it already thinks it is. It's the same movement, but it goes one way. It's like a slinky, you know? It's the same movement. And it, and it generates a movement. Yeah? It's just <laughs> so it's constantly desiring to become. It can never, it can never rest. Yeah? Because the slinky isn't a thing. It's a movement. Selfing is a movement. It's not a self. So it's constantly having to move. So there's agitation. So let's say the primary desire can't be fulfilled. You can't be a self. What does that happen? What happens? That produces a slew of other desires to get relief from the primary desire. Because I'm not, de- I'm not becoming self. So man, I'm feeling fucking weird and uncomfortable in the skin. So let's shoot some dope. Let's drink. Do that. And therefore, every addiction, I believe, comes from the primary addiction of self, of self or mind addicted to the idea of being a self. And it's a constant addiction, a constant drug deal, because you can never arrive. So you have, you're constantly shooting it up, you know, every day. And the mind just has its huge process, its huge, like, uh, cache of drugs is the thought system. And it's just thinking about you somewhere else at some other time, all day, isn't it? It's placing you in a past, oh, I wish it was like that now. <laughs> or, oh, I hope that doesn't happen next week. Yeah, yeah. So, it takes its little drug, which is the idea of being a self, and then it places it, and this is its, this is its syringe. Really. This is its bindle. This is its package. It places it somewhere else at some other time and thinks about it. Isn't it? All the while, shooting up. Yeah. <sighs> thinking, 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 thinking. But it can't generate. It can't Make it so. It's always seemingly so. It appears to be true or false to you. Yeah? It's always seemingly so. It's an appearance, and that's the solution. That's the solution. But most people are, are, are dealing with this addiction from the product of the addiction, which is the feeling of being a self. So the, it's already, you've already shot the drug, and you believe in your contemplating, should I take the shot or not? You already shot it up. There's a feeling of being a self already in place, and now you're trying to deal with that addiction from total addiction to it? It's insane. <laughs> when there's a feeling of self trying to get out of self, that's like one of the highest grades heroines in its little cash. That's like the highest 99% pure coke. You're already identified as self while you're trying to get out of self. <laughs> You can't see the, it's like a mobile hell. Wherever you go, it's just producing it. The point is, is, are you that? Are you that? Are you that appearance of being a self that's suffering from all these other addictions? I know, I'm not saying what you are. You need to find out yourself. It won't help to hear it. You won't. It'll help if you sit here, but it won't help to just hear it and think you know it by hearing it. It's letting it in. And then there is a huge aspect of mind that's prior to this little stage play of selfing. <laughs> there is. It's actually the lighting system that allows this play to be seen all day and night. It's actually awareness and light. I would say that's what we are. 
you are that. So you already do, you already perceive the effects of the drug. You're way prior to it. Because the effects are only in appearance. The, the shooting is only in appearance. It has no factual reality in a sense. Yeah. So there's your freedom, right there. But your freedom, right here, there's no freedom right there. Because self can't get out of self. So you'll keep trying new things to create, you know, to get a little relief from the unbearability of trying to be what you can never be, really. I'm using the word you because the language, but I'm not implying that. There's the mind attempting to be what it cannot complete. So it is unbearable. Yeah? It's a constant state of agitation. That's why a lot of people are seeking all day. They're seeking relief. Aren't they? Through TV or through something or eating. There's a huge demand to get relief from like an unnamed source. You don't really see it. Oh, I want to really, if we could say I want relief from Idaho, then we'd move from Idaho. You know? Oh, I remember we let leave from her, I'm leaving this relationship. But this, it's an unnamed source, you can't see it, because it's actually the activity of being you. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and you can't entertain being free of that, because you're identified as it. Yeah. So, no, 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 no. I don't want to go to the ultimate question. So let me seek all these other solutions. Yeah? That's the whole dilemma, a big dilemma in recovery, is if you're identified as what's driving you crazy, you can't entertain being free of it. You can, the only way you can entertain freedom is as it. I'm going to get freedom, which doesn't work. I've seen it over and over again. I've seen it in my own life and other lives. It doesn't work. But if you're not that, if you're not that, then the next thing the mind can do, free from that bondage, is, hey, I can be free of it. And it may be immediate, the freedom. The hint is immediate, and then it may translate as more freedom as you live here in this space and time. But the fact is, it hits, and it's like an unspoken yes, or like Ramana Maharshi, this master used to say, your head is already in the tiger's mouth. It's basically a done deal. The mind has come out of that mental yogic posture of selfing, you know? And so it entertains, hey, I'm not that. So when it entertains, I'm not that. Not, I'm entertaining, I'm not that. As this, this is what happens all day. Selfing's in place and you're entertaining all this. But this is, hey, 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 oh, what? You come out, yeah? And you know the solution. You know the problem by the solution. Because when the problem becomes emphasized, the solution recedes. It's sort of like light and darkness here. Yeah? Darkness cannot appear where there's light. It's just the absence of light. Yeah. So as soon as light shows up, you won't be able to you know, vanquish the darkness or fight it. It's gone. It's immediate in a sense. Yes? Same, same in a way. Mind comes out of the idea of being this long-lasting, independent, separate, and it's a living idea. It's a constant addiction. It's shooting up all the time. Yeah? It can't, it's not like when I shot cocaine, I just, one day I just, I had shot so much over the years that I hit it, and I, that's all I ever needed. That's it. I've done it. Cocaine, I'm now totally satisfied. Thank you, cocaine. Thank you. I've reached an ultimate primary state of satisfaction. No. Every addiction needs more. Every freaking addiction. Same thing with self As within, so without. All our addictions are mirroring this addiction, basically. Because all our addictions are totally unfulfilling, because you never come to an end with them. They can't be fulfilled. That's, what, that's why they're called addictions. <coughs> It's like those, the, the image of a hungry ghost in Tibetan Buddhism where you've got this ghost that's got a huge belly, super hungry, but he's got a very small mouth. He can't eat enough to ever satiate himself. That's what mind is like. It can't become self. <laughs> it can't have the final hit. I've thought about myself so much, I am that, which I've thought about. My mind has created the self. Hallelujah! It's finished, Yes? All we are, we're in, a, we're in a very stilted, deformed, playing God. It can't create self. But it's trying its fucking hardest to make it seem so. Yeah? <laughs> All day. But you're the seeing of that. That's why there's a suffering. Because there's seeing of it. And then you believe you're the one that's seeing it. Yeah? So the, the, the clear awareness actually binds you to the hell that you think you're in. That's why people don't want to be conscious in a lot of ways. When they get loaded, they want to be unconscious. They're tired of being conscious. 
That's, that's the thing I was scared of most. I didn't want to be awake in any moment. Because I had so much guilt and shame about what I'd done and all this stuff. That, man, the, the disease, the disease, the addiction kept me as far away as possible from where the cure is. That was his whole point. So that it can, 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 so the addiction continue on. And it has the greatest little hook when self tries to get out of self. It's the perfect form of addiction, because you don't know you're addicted. You think, oh, I'm getting better. <laughs> as what? A self. And if you get it better as a self, you're going to get worse as a self. Whatever you think you achieve, you're going to lose. Because you're going to be lax one day. You're not going to get up and meditate. That whole day is going to be terrible. Now, your whole day being good or bad is based on if you meditated. What an insane fucking thing. When I was a kid, I wasn't looking towards meditation or retreats got to sign up for the next child retreat. I was freaking in the space you'd like to get to when you do those retreats. You're already there. Obviously, it was primary. It's never been produced by your behavior. It actually influenced your behavior constantly when you were a young kid. <laughs> That's, it's like prior to you getting it. <laughs> you can't put yourself prior to this and start playing God with it. It's just crazy. Because it will never work. You're never going to make it an object to you. You're not going to get it. You're not going to have it. <laughs> You're not even going to have the great story of losing it. It's none of that's available. It's something that's prior. Let's say more contextual. Yes, it's not in the little doing and having and getting and losing. It's not. not it doesn't doesn't play that game. It's it's the it's the space of all the games. Yeah. So I would say that would be the right view. If that view is held, then if you meditate, it's the right meditation. What livelihood you have is the right one at that moment. And then if there's a movement to change, it will be, it will be the unright one in a past moment. You'll be in the right one now. Yes? Right understanding. I don't know what other things they do. Right understanding, right livelihood, right meditation. All those things will sort of echo or... or will be like an echo of the unspoken yes. So when you're sitting meditating, there'll be a sense of meditated, you know, you've meditated, really. That you are not the Alpha and the Omega. You're an appearance down the line of mind. Yeah? And in every appearance is the, is the nature of mind. We access it, no matter where you think you are. But when you try to access it as a self, that throws it, that uh, doesn't seem to work because the self always puts it so, like when the self wants to know God, it becomes a knower of God, yeah? or a lover of God. Ramana Maharshi's description of knowing God is to know God is to be God. I like that one much better. Yeah? That to me is a real valuable knowledge. If, if there's a knowing God and I'm the knower, what's that but subject-object? Now God's the object and I'm the knower of that object. And so which is the bigger God in this? The object of God or the subjective God? I would say it's the subjective God. So playing God continues with God. Yeah? But in this case, knowing God is being God. Oh, it's so incredibly beautiful because it doesn't take any time. It's, it's not like, all right, knowing God and now 40 years of tons intensive practices to get to the point of you being God. That's what it would look like from the point of view of you. But we're cutting the you out. So knowing God is being God. <laughs> it saves you a huge amount of time. <laughs> Wait a minute. I don't have anything to do with it? Exactly. I'm irrelevant? Exactly. Hallelujah. So it's like, you know, it's like a one page book, yeah? The beginning and the end is over and there's no author on it. It's just like, who wants to read that? That's why it's the best book of all. Because <laughs> when you read, read, read it blank, leave it blank, a lot gets written on it. <laughs> See, that's what life is like. Yeah. Seeing is very quick. Paul, you were saying, uh, and you say it often, that self can never get out of the self. Yes. And uh, yeah, I can definitely uh, relate to that and believe that. So, in other words, nothing that we can do uh, can achieve that or, or, you know, help you realize self. So, if you could talk some more about, so in other words, you're not the doer, and again, that seems pretty obvious, 
So how, you know, what happens? How does it happen? Uh, you know, talk about the toll. Uh, well, the thing uh, is, is you're just let in on an open secret, really. So seeing is the thing, right? Yes. But see, the thing is, it's always happening. Now, the experience from where we are, it may be it happened to me at that time, but it's always happening. So you, you, it's not like you plug into something that isn't happening and then it starts to happen. It's just, it's like an open secret. It's going on right now, and yet, but let's say the mind isn't emphasizing it. it, it maybe it's not uh, necessarily the right view. There's a mind that hijacks it and says, no, I'm seeing, and da, 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 I'm comprehending, I'm whatever. So I guess that's what happened. That's why it doesn't feel very authentic, because oftentimes, I, I have had enough glimpses of sort of me getting out of the way for brief moments, yeah. and I know how you know, sweet that can be. But most of the time, self hijacks it, and yeah, I'm, you know, I'm whatever. I'm well, the self thing does, yeah. yeah. All of that. yeah. So it is seeing in the background, but it's kind of uh, perverted, because I get, you know, I, I own it, and I don't get involved in the whole thing and making it uh, something. Really. Well, why I like this message in a way, because sometimes the mind can hear it, and what it hears becomes an absolute, because it is, yeah? So in other words, when you see that all there is is selfing, and it really hits you, then all there is is selfing. <laughs> so that's not where you're, you're not taking your cues from that. You, know, you step back a little farther, yeah? Even, see, there's, selfing has a movement, yeah? Because it can't become, so it's constantly moving. And it's defined by trying to get out of something and try to get into something, right? A dualistic movement, yeah? So it's not just a movement, it's... It's framed by a, a, a certain, like a, it's almost like a tide, low tide and high tide, yeah? It has a certain play on it. The point is, like, when I heard some statements, they became absolutes to me. That's what happened. My mind hit it. And in, uh, so in the demonstration of the principle, I saw the principle is the whole thing. It's just, it's just appearing in different, like, degrees or different sizes, yes? But it's the same thing. So there's a sense of being convinced or to believe with certainty that whatever arises and whatever that dynamic of you feeling like you're seeing the thoughts, that's not so. There's just seeing. Yeah. So it's the immunity to me came from a, an, like a sense of absoluteness to it. Yeah. It was like there's no wiggle room. You know what I mean? There's no you in there. <laughs> I mean, literally, there's no you in there at all. And so... That dawn, you know, I don't know. My mind maybe has a has a a pull towards that. It maybe likes. Uh, obviously, in addiction, I was in this very extreme person. So this the same way maybe it served it because it it took it to the extreme. There is no self. <laughs> End of story. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't have any. There isn't but. Or there's not a but up there. There's not like a uh, like a. a you know, like a clause or an amendment, maybe. No, it's just an extreme view. But I've always, in this view, in this life, there's always been an extreme view happening through here. I mean, when I did, a, when I was into addiction, I was a perfect devotee to drugs. I, I matched my devotion to any great devotee in the spiritual archives of all the religions. I put me up against Hanuman and everyone. Seriously, I gave everything over to it. I lived and thought it and loved it. I gave whatever I could get from you over to it. I was I was serving it at beck and call. I prostituted everything. I did I did everything for that for that drug, yes, for that drive. So in a sense maybe that extremeness served me because when I heard this message I got I heard the absolutes of it. It wasn't like it's not like 90% and 10%. It wasn't like half measures. It hit me like a complete, like an unspoken yes. It was strong. It was like, and it was like, just like when I got finally into recovery, I, it was like a done door. That was, I mean, that was over. I haven't gone back there in 24 years. My thought system never even brings up a thought of drug or alcohol. And I mean, it does. It's just, it's like it never even happened in a sense. It's like a, a giant door that had a lot of traffic coming in and my, out of my life just got walled up as if there was never a door there to begin with. Yeah, so maybe the mind is extreme in this case and it's serving me that way. Because once I got, I'm not that. <laughs> All right, I'm not that. But it doesn't give much wiggle room. Into, but can I beat it a little bit? 
Can I get sucked back into it just for a while? And no, you're not that. Yeah, you are the context. No matter how much you're looking or seeing the content, it doesn't mean you're the seer. That would be content. It doesn't mean you're what's being seen. That would be content. You're now context. Yes, and you've never not been context. And no matter how many times you dove in that pool and you know, like a, 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 a pearl diver hoping to find specialness and uniqueness and rightness, there ain't no fit in all those shells you collected. And I don't need to dive anymore. <laughs> I don't think there's a special golden pearl down there waiting for me. <laughs> Maybe I had enough. Who knows? But I know my mind is a, has an absolute strain to it. So, so it hit me. So I don't, uh, like when people share that they, they, you know, they went into it, they don't feel connected, I think that's just mind, that's another mental state arising and seeing. Yeah? And then I really felt really great today, that's just another mental state. Now, are there preferences to mental states? That arises also. Yeah, it would seem that the mind has a preference to feeling better than worse, but that's also a mental state. Yeah? And I can't see... And how could I be the mental state if I'm the seeing of the mental state? I just can't get that anymore. Where before, I totally took it to be the state because I was taking a mental state to be me. Yeah? So I could recognize other mental states, but I thought it was me that was recognizing them. That was one of the first things that was given to me at these meetings, satsang. I heard, I heard some, a woman share, and I realized, Jesus, it's been a mental state claiming to be the seer of the other mental states. Oh! <laughs> yeah? <laughs> that was really cool. And I'm, oh, it's because my aperture just went, whoop, like this, whoa. You mean I'm included? <laughs> you mean, I thought I was behind the camera. <laughs> no, no. And uh, I had a number of those examples where the principle must have settled in, you know, like, you're never going to be appearing in front of the camera. So whatever appears in front of the camera ain't you. Doesn't mean it's bad or good, it's just not you. That's the whole point. You, know, you can get bad and good, but that's about you usually. But so once once the context is diff you know, of course the mind is constantly going to present the appearance of you as a content. Even with the flavor of the strain of having context as an you know, sense, yes, that's really what I am. But it just infuriates the content even more, really. You know, you just have to see it. Or not, you know. This is just this humble invitation with the hopes that it would, uh, instead of having your life contract and contract and contract, or maybe allow it to start expanding a little more. You know, pump a little space into it. Instead of pumping tons of meaning into space, pump some space into your life, and then we'll give separation to the meanings, you know? Instead of seeing like a giant weather front of meaning, oh no, what's going to happen? There'll be a lot of light coming through. And then you'll see them as clouds, and then they start separating even more, and they start losing their shape that you've been giving them, and they just dissipate, yes? And then there's more clear skies. And if you get a couple of views of clear skies, you're not get if you're not fooled by the clouds. The clouds fool us or keep the light from us seemingly because of the position we're in. We think we're seeing the clouds. But what would, what would happen if you were on the other side of the clouds from the sun's point of view? The clouds ain't stopping the sun at all. <laughs> it's, light as, it's light as light up there. But from our point of view, and that's what causes it to seem that way, is the point of view, is, oh, these clouds are stopping me from... I've had an experience of that sun, but now something's getting in the way. That's just the you positioning, yeah? It's, the, it's seen from here that that may be happening, but it doesn't have the effect that it happens when it seems to be happening this way. Yeah. It takes a... It, it, it uh, neuters its effect. Yeah? So the dream-making machine keeps going. It's spooling appearances and placing you in situations and things as the doer and this and that. And it will probably keep on doing that because it has a desire to become. Yeah, it's a drive. But that doesn't mean you're that. <laughs> it just means that's what's happening. Why does it always mean, has to, why does it have to mean it's happening to me? <laughs> you know, there's always this little addition that we don't see happening. The idea of it's happening to me. <laughs> we think me is a solid, like, fixed place that things are happening to. No, it's made up. It's not true. You cannot be seen what you are. You can't. You cannot be heard. You cannot be felt. You cannot be 
tasted, you cannot be touched. You're beyond that. You're beyond the realm of things. Yeah? You're appearing in the realm of things, seemingly. It's, this is allowing consciousness. It's not allowing consciousness. It's moving through, in a way. It, senses, it seems like that. I would say this is appearing in consciousness, but let's just say consciousness in the act of contact seems to be moving through us. But it's sort of like the camera, you know, claiming it's the light, you know. It just facilitates the light doing something. To claim to be the light would distort the light dramatically, yeah? You would think you're doing it. So now you'd be running the apertures. You know, I'm, I'm going to get a better picture. This is all about me. And then, and then there's the movie you seem to be watching. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you just realize you're just the camera box. Light's coming through. And maybe the emphasis of mine will be on the light more than the box. I, I believe it will, because the only reason why it's fixated on the box is it's fallen for the idea that it's you. See, what it's enamored of is the consciousness moving through it, not what the consciousness is moving through. But when the mind combines the two and says, What's, what the consciousness is moving through is doing the consciousness, then the love gets a little bit shifted to this. Yeah. So the love, mind loving light gets shifted to this, the bearer of the light. And it now takes itself to be the one that's giving out the light. Yeah. It's a weird thing. So... What, if it was placed in light, would be abiding in the truth, or like they say, or resting in the everlasting peace. Now, when it takes itself to be this, it creates obsession and agitation constantly. Yeah? It, it flips its... This, this attention on this, as the giver and the taker, the doer and the haver, produces a lot of, a lot of crazy mental states to, to arise. If it was put on the light, you'd be seeing all those states, and in the seeing them, they would diminish you know, their effects, because you wouldn't be thinking them to be you anymore. You would be resting in what you are. You know, that would give you the immunity to all the slings and arrows about what you're not, and there's tons of them, and they keep making more of them, because getting shot by an arrow becomes, makes you become the one who got shot by the arrow. Why do you think so much shit comes up? Because it, it, it creates a sense, it doesn't create it, it makes a sense of the shit's happening to you, and the emphasis is on the you it's happening to, not what's happening. Because if someone else shares the same event, you don't have half the meaning it has when it's happening to you. So it ain't, it's happening, it's the idea of it's happening to you, that's the emphasis. Yeah. So therefore, all the, all the uh, drama has a role that's prime, way, way, different than what we may think, like the Course in Miracles would say, you're never upset for the reason you think. So here this is happening. I would say it's really to uh, embellish the reflection of self. Yeah? So if something really bad's happening, you must be really important for that, something really bad to happen to. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's crazy. So, see the addiction of mind and what it's addicted to. If you're not that, then being so, like, wedded to the agitation of mind, selfing all day, you may be wedded to the nature of mind, which is reflective and empty and bright, which is always available at all times. Yeah? Not brought to you by agitation, that's for sure. You're never going to get there. So, it's a simple invitation. Repetition can be helpful. Even if you got the idea that thoughts weren't yours, it would probably be very helpful, usually helpful. Because most people are in a relationship with thoughts as the thinker of them or the, or, the, or, the, or the object of them. And it's driving, that whole dilemma produces a lot of agitation. You want to get out of something you're not in. It's crazy. Like we say... Uh, Just see what the mind brings. I saw it more by it being absent. That's how I learned about it, really. I didn't know when it was in place how much potency the mind has. But when something happened in my head and it shifted out of my thoughts, first it moved into just an alcoholic thought. It was a totally different uh, way of viewing it, yeah? or being, in, 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 in a sense, engaged with it. The mind has 
has so much meaning. It's, 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 you have to see the self in because it doesn't have a life. It has to claim one. Yeah? That's what it's busily doing. Yeah? So all the processes of living, all the processes of being or manifesting here, it claims to be the one that's doing it. But if you look at your body or functions, most of them are involuntary. You have nothing to do with them. And the only one major one that you have half of, half of to do with is breath. It's half voluntary, half involuntary. All the other ones are involuntary, like digestion or anything like that. You're not digesting any food that you've ever eaten. <laughs> you know? It's, you're not... So, I mean, it would sound absurd if someone sat here and said, yeah, today I'm going to spend the day busily digesting all the food I ate this week. Yeah, you go, ha, 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 ha. But the same, the same view is held with thoughts. You believe you're the thinker of them. Really? And then no one thinks that's absurd. That they're not, you know. But the fact is, apply it to what we call an involuntary activity. Oh, I'm digesting my... Oh, yeah, that's funny. I try to make jokes about it all the time because it is funny. I'm hoping that will bounce to the other one. And it, so you can hold the same, because it's, you, at the same time you think that's funny, you think this is totally serious, that you're the thinker of this. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, seriously, don't you? You believe you're the thinker most of the time. The head does, anyway, doesn't it? Or you're about me. A lot of them. Yeah, right, right? You don't see the hilarity of that? We can joke about, oh, I, I, I forgot that burrito last week, I didn't go home. Sorry, I gotta go, I gotta digest some food, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, well, well, why are we trying to do the same? Thing? I'm not gonna. Why are we? What? Is it that absurdly different? I don't think so. This is a bodily function. The brain is producing a very subtle activity. Thoughts, yes. The brain is doing it. Right? The light goes on, and thoughts are made, and then the, the consciousness sees them, like a eye would see a bird go by. What's the difference? To the absurdity of thinking that, oh, no one's digesting food. No one's pumping their own blood, or they would have died already. No one's. Exactly. Why, why not apply it to thinking? Why are you the thinker? Well, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm thinking uh, the, the, I have an exercise that helps me see how the thoughts are not my own. Like, just simply asking myself, okay, if the thoughts are your own, can you predict your next thought? I never can. You know, they just have, God knows what, from where or whatever. That's right. But so, you know, how could they be my own? I got no control over them. You know, what comes in. You know, even though I believe myself to be a rational person, but I cannot predict my next thought. Yeah, yeah. If they just come. Whatever. Yeah. Well, you could do that, let's say, if you're a house painter. So, therefore, you could plan your day when you're on the job. I'm going to do the kitchen, the left wall, and that. So, why don't you plan your thinking day? All right. right. 11 o'clock, I'm going to think about lunch. <laughs> or 11.05. From 1106, I'll think about my relationships. I was a little 12. I think a lot about that. <laughs> 12 and 1, I'll take a break and watch some inane shit on TV. But 101, I'll be back thinking again about what I can possibly do to make my life better in the future. <laughs> There'll be a lot of dissenting votes then, a lot of harbingers of doom. But I'll try to listen to their point of view completely, obviously. <laughs> and by three, I need a drink. <laughs> I'm going to go underneath my spread and lay in bed all day. Because I'm fucked! <laughs> I mean, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll get to the emotional state. That'll be a real one. All right, I'm going to feel love from 9.30. I only have a half hour for love today. 9.30 to 10. <laughs> then I'll think about my relationship and dread and fear will arise because she's going to be leaving me and sleeping with someone else. All right, that will go on for the rest of the afternoon. Then I better go to a movie and get some fucking relief and maybe shoot some heroin. Uh, probably help too. <laughs> it's insane, yet it sounds funny, but doesn't it? We're trying to manage and control things that they're not in our jurisdiction, so to speak. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're set off by many other chemical considerations going on in this place. You know, we're like just a walking experiment, really, thinking, and we're trying to try to sit and make this one solid thing to sort of organize all the shit that's going on. This idea of being a self, as it's happening to me or I'm doing it all. It's a pretty big leap, you know, I would say. And I find it to really be claustrophobic, producing people are fucking, they're like those animals who, you know, when they have mange or something, they put those cones on them. 
all their attentions from here up. They're in this, this like vortex of thought and interpretation. And they're just dry, they're just seeking like incredible, but it's hard to see through those cone things, you know. All you do is get bounced back to the thought system. You can't really see out of the city. You're thinking, you're looking, but you're looking in the system that self can't can get out of the self. You think you're looking, like, I'm really looking to get out of the situation. But that's being in the situation. <laughs> Jeez, oh, really? He goes, right. It's the fault is right back to self. Yeah. Self competing self. <laughs> so, there is a solution. There is. The problem is imaginary. It's, been, it's being made up. It's not so, but so it, it appears to be so. But it has a lot of work for that to occur every day. Yeah? The thought system generates a lot of thoughts every day, a lot of thoughts. With, I would say, the main premise to produce this sense of being the self by our attention and interest to the thoughts. Yeah? And it's, you know, in most cases, it seems like it's doing a good job. <laughs> I mean, really, 70,000 thoughts a day to get over here from Petaluma or something? Come on. Yeah. I mean, how many thoughts do I need to navigate a Saturday? Like, maybe 20 at the most, really. Uh, I should eat now? Okay. You know, do I need thoughts to tell me that I'm going to the bathroom when I'm going to the bathroom? Like, if I'm walking out the door, do I have to have my head go, you're walking out the room. Oh, thank you. Aren't you just walking out the room? That, wouldn't that be evidence enough? <laughs> Why would you need to have, like, an affirmation in your head that you're doing what you're doing? It's insane. I mean, you know? <laughs> that always blows my mind. I'm going in the water. I never say that. I just go in the water. <laughs> just jump in. I jumped in. Yo, thank you. I mean, Jesus Christ. Yeah. I mean, it'd be like being in the football game with Howard Cassell, a little earplug, telling, you know, interpreting the game, narrating the game. But I'm in the game. Paul's doing, having a bad day. What? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, I am. Oh, I knew it. Thank you, Howie. I knew I was having a bad day. <laughs> am I having a bad day? Yeah, yeah, oh, yes. I've been verified. I'm having a bad day. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Take the plug out. Fuck it. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not as scary as you think, really, to show up. You've got all the, all the ability to show up to whatever arises you do. You may not think so, obviously, but you will if it happens. And the thing is, when something really severe happens, if you're identified as this, you know, it's, it's Johnny come lately. It's the last thing that arises, shows up after a big event occurs. Like when I've gotten really injured in the water and stuff, the last thing that showed up was the narrator of the, of the event. <laughs> it was suspiciously missing when the real event was happening. And the fact is, it's constantly missing. <laughs> it just rides up and claims everything as you. Oh, I did that. I did this. It's all baloney. It had nothing to do with what's happening. Yeah. So 